So, <clears throat> Billy Mays Hayes, also known as uh, Just for Men, put out a live stream today. He's going to court. In case you're not following along, I'm talking about uh, Texas Sheepdog. He's got court today, court this morning. Classy misdemeanor, disturbing the peace. A lot of what he said I don't have any real disagreements with. Um, obviously, since a, a prosecutor has more experience being a prosecutor than I have being a prosecutor, since I've never been a prosecutor, nor do I ever intend on being a prosecutor, you would probably fare better against me if I was placed into the prosecution position than you would against an actual prosecutor. Um, what Texas Sheepdog doesn't appear to understand is that the difference between me and a prosecutor is when I got my, uh, when I passed the bar, instead of applying to become a prosecutor, I instead went into private practice. That's the difference. Exact same training, exact same Exact same, exact same, exact same. There's, there is no difference between a lawyer who is um, able to be a prosecutor and a lawyer who's able to practice family law. But I appreciate the uh, acknowledgement that yes, even a first year family law attorney would fare better than a person who is not trained or licensed to practice law. There are there are a couple issues. Um, well, let me let me get the criticism of of just for men out of the way. The criticism is that lawyers do indeed want you to shut up, but they want you to shut up all the fucking way about everything, throwing a bunch of allegedly's around things. I was allegedly accused of this and that. Now you were accused of it. You allegedly didn't. You were accused of it. You definitely were accused of it. Dummy. He reminds me of uh, Chauncey. Chauncey liked to throw allegedly around everything like that. Changed the goddamn thing. But no, lawyers don't want you to talk about your case because you say stupid things. You say stupid things that you don't realize. Like, uh, Just For Men didn't realize that he said on a live stream that he lied to the fucking court today. He didn't realize that he admitted on a live stream that he lied to the fucking court. I know I'm a bad guy or whatever, but I I feel bad that he's so fucking stupid that he doesn't understand that shut up means shut the fuck up. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. I am so glad he's not my client. I like to win. I love to win. I don't I don't care what side of the ball I'm on. I want to win. And that motherfucker makes it hard on a lawyer. Saying that you lied to the court, that you didn't have a lawyer when you did, and I don't think you did. I think you're just, you're, I think you're lying about lying to the court, to be perfectly honest with you. But shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. It's shut the fuck up every day. If you are suspected of a crime, shut the fuck up. Don't. Don't recount the situation. Don't rehash the situation about how at the end of at the end of the officers leaving, you said I IDs motherfuckers. Don't say that. Just shut the fuck up. Jesus fucking Christ. And never, never say you lied to the court. Just don't. Just don't. <sighs> Zen.
some other uh, one other little uh, nitpicky thing is that in order to be accused of using language to disturb the peace in Texas, it doesn't have to be profanity. It, it can be just abusive language. Saying, saying that, uh, saying I'm gonna I'm gonna walk into your house and have sex with your wife to a man's face may be may be disturbing the peace in Texas. It's abusive. Uh, saying saying that I think you're a homosexual and and you uh, suck dick like a seal blowing trumpets. That that may be abusive. Well, I guess I threw I threw uh, vulgarity in there, but it's not. I, I I'm just I just want to be clear that there are no magic words in disturbing the peace. There are no magic words. It's the idea that's being communicated. That's what the that's what the uh, prosecuting attorney is going to focus on. That's what the defense attorney is going to focus on. Is the prosecuting attorney is going to say that there was a there was provoking language that a reasonable person would be incited to an immediate breach of the peace by hearing these things. And what the defense attorney is going to say is that, no, you hear a lot worse every day. This is nothing. This is, he was entitled to ask for the IDs. Just throwing the word motherfucker on the end of it doesn't change anything. It just, just hearing the word motherfucker if it is one word, some people get write it as two. I don't know. I don't really care. But but just hearing that word isn't an incitement to an immediate breach of the peace. That, that's what they're going to focus on. They're not going to focus on did Jack swear. That's that's not material. It's that's not a that's not a point that they're going to focus on at all. In it was was the language that Jack used likely to incite an immediate breach of the peace. Anyway, what else? Uh, law libraries. Uh, yeah, there are law libraries in California. Every county has a law library. Uh, part of your filing fees and everything goes to maintaining the law library. I just, I just know that. I mean, I, I don't mean to be a dick, but I've gone in there. I've gone in there to do research on things, and you know, you hear the pro pers go in there. And they'll ask the librarian, you know, where do I find this? And and they'll start flipping through it. And you gotta have, I mean, it's you gotta have a lot of background. It's like throwing people, throwing people a book on physics when they don't understand basic arithmetic yet. It's it's not easy. Now, is that am I saying that that a pro per can't? No. I'm saying that it's really difficult. There is, however, no constitutional right to an attorney if there is no prospect of jail. If, if there is no prospect of going to jail, not even a single day in jail, then there's no right to an attorney. If, technically speaking, even if there is a possibility of jail, if the judge says, I'm not going to sentence anybody to jail, then there's no, there's no attorney. You don't have a right to an attorney. In fact, even if there is a possibility of, an, of jail, if it goes through without them giving you an attorney and you don't get a single day in jail, then you did not have a right to a, an attorney. If at the end of it, however, you do get sentenced to a day or more in jail, then retroactively, you had a right to an attorney. <laughs> so, so I know it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but that's that's what the Constitution says. But Jack is right that it's you are going up against a trained attorney. You're going up against someone who does this for a living, who who is has been paid to sit down. Who has, a, who has a good understanding of the of the legal arguments in the first place, and who's been paid to sit down and go over the facts and apply them to the law, etc. 
it's not a, it's not an easy thing to do. That being said, you can pay the fine and not undergo that ordeal. You can undergo it and at worst you're going to end up paying the fine. At best, maybe you get off or maybe you get a reduced fine. Or you can pay for an attorney, which may cost you more than the fine in the first place, to see about fighting it and you have a better chance, not a guaranteed outcome, but a better chance of getting out of the charge. But maybe at the end of the day, you'll end up paying for the attorney and the, uh, and the fine. Hey, thanks for looking before trying to come over, lady. Good driving. My boss has a has an idea, and I think it's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, his suggestion is because he he strongly suspects that the that the DAs overcharge, and they and they do it for a reason. They do it so that they have uh, bargaining chips. You're a terrible driver, lady. And your vehicle mirrors your terrible driving. Anyway, um, so the DAs tend to overcharge, and and what his suggestion is is that the loser pays the court costs for the winner. That's something that you see a lot in uh, civil and family, uh, like DV cases. If the loser in a DV case will generally have to pay the uh, the winner's fees the reasonable attorney's fees of the winner. And uh, that's what that's what my boss proposes. Um, so already, if the defendant loses, the defendant has to pay the court costs. Generally speaking, your state may vary. But uh, if the state has to pay your reasonable attorney's fees, if the state loses, then that might cut down on some of the uh, overcharging bullshit. And it could be a, it could be just a straight math kind of ratio. You know, if, if they charge you with with three separate counts and you get convicted on one, then you won two and they won one, which means that you get your reasonable attorney's fees re- repaid or two thirds of your reasonable attorney's fees repaid or something along those lines. Anyway, that was his thought. I think it's a pretty good idea, but I'm not married to it. I think I've rambled long enough. I just, I just wanted to mention before he takes it down and he will take it down because he's retarded and he tries to stuff the cat back into the bag is that, uh, just for men admitted in public to lying to the court. Uh, one other thing, uh, you know, there, there is a difference, not in just skin color, between the way uh, Southside Slacker looks and the way that uh, Just For Men looks. Uh, just For Men looks like a middle-aged, out-of-shape, diabetic white man. No obvious gang affiliations, nothing funky going on, relatively clean cut mildly retarded, but not, not a, not a real issue. SAXTC Prez, I don't know his, his racial or his ethnicity. He looks like a white guy to me. I would call him a white guy. I don't know if he's Hispanic. I don't really care. He looks like a white guy to me, but he looks like a biker. I could see that I could see cops giving him more of an issue than, um, than, than they would give to Jack simply because SAXTC Prez Looks like the kind of guy who would give them trouble. Southside Slacker looks like he has gang tattoos. He looks like he's a gangbanger. And it's and it's not the color of his skin, it's the tats. You put a guy out there with lily white skin, with the, the same kind of tats, and dressing the same way, and that other fun stuff, and he's going to get the same kind of treatment. It just, it all goes back, like, there's a huge, there is a huge Hispanic population in San Antonio. There's a huge 
Hispanic component to the various police departments and sheriff's departments in the greater San Antonio area. It's not racism against Hispanics. They're looking at the way you dress. They're looking at your tats. They're looking at how you carry yourself. You throw you throw a suit and tie on Southside Slacker. A, a fitted suit and tie, and you send him into court. He's gonna get he's gonna get completely different treatment. Assuming that his tattoos aren't visible, he's gonna get completely different treatment. It's not it's not the skin that's the issue. It's the other mannerisms, it's the other indicia that are the issue. <sighs> anyway, I think I've rambled way past my rambling limit. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.